Hello and welcome to another day of Grace and Grit with Adventist Frontier Mission. It is a joy to have you again with us today. Today I would like to share with you and explore together a story that is very well known for all of us. And I would like to bring four lessons from this story that are of relevance to what we are experiencing today. The story is found in the book of Genesis, and I would like you to come with me to chapter 45 of Genesis. Chapter 45 starts verse 1, Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence? So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified of his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph the one you sold into Egypt. Think about that moment. The moment when finally the brothers are with this very important leader in Egypt who says, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold to Egypt. What thoughts do you think were going through the mind of Joseph's brothers? Guilt? Terror, as we read. And it's interesting because the the verse says, and now, the next verse says, and now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. I want you to think a little bit about this phrase. Don't be distressed and don't be angry with yourselves. These were feelings that they were experiencing and Joseph could see that his brothers were experiencing anxiety, distress, anger. And he tells them, hey, this is not a moment for distress or anger. This is a moment for reframing. And this is the first point I would like to emphasize. Joseph is inviting his brothers to reframe, to look at the situation they are experiencing through God's eyes. And it is very important that as we continue to experience the consequences of COVID-19, that we also take Joseph's advice to reframe. How can we look at the crisis in which we are living through God's eyes? What opportunities can we find? What opportunities to be a blessing, to extend a hand, What opportunities to pray? What are we seeing God is doing? God is working in amazing and powerful ways around the world. In the midst of what is taking place, God is working. But I want you to go back to the story and continue seeing some other lessons that we can draw from this story. He's saying, yourself for selling me here, do not feel distress and anger, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. And this is a fascinating story. And this is a very important point for us. Joseph is saying, even though it is true that you were the ones many years ago who took me and sold me, really, God is the ultimate one in control of what is happening here. And the only reason you were able to do that is because God sent me here ahead of you. Many times it's difficult to accept this reality of God being in control. But Joseph is telling his brothers, hey, God is ultimate ultimately in control. And then he continues saying, for two years now, there has been famine in the land. And now, for the next five years, there will not be plowing and reaping. This is of great interest to me. Why? 
Because God communicates to his people what he is going to do. This is a principle that we find in scriptures once and again. There is more to come, is what Joseph is telling them. But the beautiful thing is that God had chosen Joseph as the agent that he was going to use to bless the people in the midst of the famine. And I want to say that God has a chosen group of people that he wants to use today to be the messengers and to be the instrument that God uses to bless the world today. The last section says, God sent me ahead of you to preserve you for a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. And it is here where I want to emphasize the last point. God has a group of people. He calls it a remnant. It's a beautiful uh, idea, a beautiful concept. A group of people who have remained faithful to God through the times. A group of people who are into the Word, understanding the times in which we live. And this group of people he has chosen with one purpose. God has sent me ahead of you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I believe God has chosen you and God has chosen me to go into the Word, to meditate, to study the Word, to understand the times in which we live so that we can be a blessing to the world. I want to tell you, today, whereas in the past people would attend a church probably with 200 members, today the same church is having probably a thousand hits online. Churches with 2,000 members were able to reach an audience of close to 1 million people online. God is creating amazing opportunities for us to share a beautiful message of hope. And we need to not be angry or distressed, but to refrain. To understand that God is ultimate, ultimately in control. To understand that we are called to go to the Bible to understand the times in which we live. And finally, that we are called to be a peculiar people who has a peculiar message in a time like this. May God bless you. And may God use you wherever you are to be a blessing. Let us pray. Father God, what a privilege we have as your children in the midst of very dire circumstances, in the midst of very challenging times where people are trying to look who to blame for this virus, where people are despairing, anxious. You have placed us in this world to help people understand the times in which we live. Oh, Father, help us to be faithful to this calling. Help us to be responsible in searching scriptures so that we can guide those people who have many questions to the light, to Jesus, who is ultimately our only hope. We thank you for this privilege, and we thank you for this opportunity you give us. We pray that you will continue to give us wisdom, continue to give us love for those around us, so that we can share with them material things that they need, but also the spiritual bread, which is where they are so hungry for. Help us to do it effectively and clearly and help us to lead everyone to Jesus, the light of the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Family with a passion 
is living their mission plan, bringing God's truth to a hungry, thirsty tribe. Knowing where the lives are always on the line. Missionaries need missionaries too. They need the prayers of loved ones. They need love from me and you. And when they just like Christ make the ultimate sacrifice, someday in heaven they'll thank you. You're a missionary too. Someday in heaven they'll thank you for the things your prayers have brought them through. And your mission is accomplished. Oh, thank you. You're a missionary. Missionary too. You're a missionary too.